Well, let's bring in Michael McCann, the legal analyst from, analyst, excuse me, from SI.com, who has joined us uh, so often during yes. the NBA lockout to take us through the ins and outs of the uh, legal machinations. And, and Mike, uh, I'll ask the same question that I posed to David Aldridge a moment ago. How much do you believe the players maneuver to disband the union and file the antitrust lawsuits against the NBA uh, set the wheels in motion for this framework of an agreement? Matt, I think it was helpful, although I think the real motivating force was the finality of the situation, that if a deal wasn't struck soon, the season was going to be lost. And I have a feeling that was the primary motivation. I also think the role of David Boyes, having a different actor in the room, played a difference. But sure, the litigation, I'm sure, bothered owners in some ways, but I don't think the owners were really worried about losing this case. I think what really worried them was, was losing a season, and that, that deadline was coming up. And Michael, through this whole process, we know Christmas is around the corner. We know the fans are eager to get basketball back. Do you think the fans had more to do with it, or Christmas, or we all just need basketball? You know, 3D, I, I think maybe it's the season of giving, right? Maybe it's the season of <laughs> the, 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 the spirits change, right, once Thanksgiving comes along. And, and the owners and players go back to their families and, and maybe getting away from the situation and, and thinking about really the, the dire consequences of a lost season, that you cancel a season and nobody wins. Everyone's a loser if there's no season. And the game would be hurt, tickets, the sales would go down, TV revenue would go down, merchandise sales would go down for years to come. So I think there's a certain sobering effect of getting away for a few days. And, and I think everything came together where they, they looked at each other and said, look, we're better off striking a deal, even if neither of us are thrilled with what the deal is. I, I can't imagine it's, it's much more difficult to get from where we are now with what is technically a lawsuit settlement to uh, a, a new collective bargaining agreement being signed than it would be from a labor negotiation to get there. But you're the one with legal analysts attached to your name, so I'll put it to you. Well, what are the logistics now to, to get the union reformed, to get votes in, and, and get the document done? Sure, Matt. So what, the first step is removing the lawsuit from the courts, and the players will petition the court that the lawsuit be, re, be dismissed. And the court will grant that. The judge will say, absolutely, the lawsuit is over. You two have reached a settlement of the litigation. The, the case goes away. The players then have to reclaim interest in the union, which, because they didn't certify the union, is a process that can actually be done fairly quickly in a matter of days. But the players, though, have to vote on that step. And after the union has reclaimed interest, then the the NBA itself, the Board of Governors, will have to vote on the agreement, and the players will have to vote. I mean, it isn't technically over, right? There's, there's always the possibility that a majority of owners or a significant portion or a majority or significant portion of players can object to it. But I think the reality is that the voting will, will get done. The, there will not be any major hurdles towards finalizing the agreement. But this is something that can't happen overnight. They still have to get rid of the lawsuit from the courts, reclaim interest in the union, and ensure that sufficient votes are made by the owners and players that everyone's okay with the deal. And most of that, uh, I assume, takes place starting start a business on Monday. That's right. The courts will. Uh, the courts are normally closed on weekends, so at this sure. point, the the lawsuit would have to be removed uh, on Monday. And, I, you know, I suspect that the courts will try to expedite that so that this isn't prolonged. And then they're going to have to go through the, the reclaiming of interest. I, I, although, you know, I also think we have to be, you know, cautious and make sure that everything is done. Although they've reached an agreement on the, the final deal, uh, sometimes there are small little details that have to be worked out. And right. it, maybe it's such a situation that not 100 percent of the deal is done, but hopefully they've pretty much reached an agreement on everything. Right. David Stern called it a tentative understanding, and uh, our understanding is there are a number of, of so-called B-list items still to be worked out, uh, but the big picture things are done. And, and to your point, Michael, I, I, I can't imagine the constituencies would vote the agreement down uh, after so much time. I think uh, David Stern and his folks, and of course Billy Hunter and his folks, have a pretty good idea of what their constituencies want. Michael McCann with us from SI.com.